everybody. Welcome to episode 1008 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles. It's going to be a fantastic day. I'm joined, as always, by Ben Funky Askren out in Wisconsin. To my right, representing Loper Nation. Big week. Big week for them. And Cozumel, Mexico. When JD didn't want to look like a tourist, he went to Mexico for Acapulco, and then he got that shirt or that hat. So people would think he's been repping this hat. one of the natives. And then to my left, my arch nemesis. Don't even want him here. Do you admit I'm your arch nemesis? And he doesn't want to be here. That's true. And yet here he is, Tyler Meissner. That's why I'm the best man for the job. That's what, that's Tyler, what I got something. I got, I got a rough one for you, Tyler, to start the show. I don't want to hear it, Ben. All right, let's do it. I got a rough one. Well, so I did this Mental Monday. You guys can go watch my Mental Monday on the oh, he needs He needs ment- Mental Monday through Sunday. Well, so I, you know, I do it on Facebook, but I also do them for the groups that we're coaching. And my, uh, I'll make it short. I won't make it a long one this week. But my Mental Monday this week was how many people tell me like, hey, Mitchell's my favorite wrestler to watch. And a big part of that is he just goes out and wrestles as hard as he can. And that's it. There's no, no shenanigans. Just he just brings the heat. And so I said, you know, well, that's people's favorite part type of wrestler someone who's really uh really aggressive and and just goes after it now what is someone's least favorite type of wrestler and i said listen i don't need names i don't want names oh my gosh. i want a i want a type of wrestler like something they do and i'll get and I'll, I'll i have my answer i'll give you guys my answer but i want to know what your answers are first and so i did the high school group on monday my youth group yesterday tyler do you want to know what my youth group said I don't want to know what they said. Real honestly, three I don't. in a row. Three of them in a row said, "Don't the say Michigan it." Michigan wrestlers. Oh my the gosh! Mich- One of them the- said Cam Amin, and two of them said the Michigan wrestlers because they don't do nothing. Oh man! Can you believe that? You're gonna get a strongly worded DM from Mike Amin real quick. This really hurt my feelings. Uh, listen, he can, he can come yell at kids under 14 if he wants to. I didn't say that. <laughs> so my actual answer is <laughs> telling everyone in wrestling. My <laughs> at the top of the show. Was, you know what? I actually, I actually didn't think about Michigan that way, really. But when they said it, I thought about it. I'm like, oh, okay. I, I guess I see their point. Um, but I actually, I, I like Michigan. I got no problem with them. So my answer was someone who has a tremendous amount of skill and ability, but yet refuses to take any chances and use said skill and ability. And then we went into fear and all that stuff. That was kind of the mental Monday. But I just found it to be totally hilarious. That I said, give me a type of wrestler, right? And I wanted like a, a description of Defensive, what they would do. Cautious. Yeah. Yes. And they were like, Michigan guys. Dang. <laughs> Here's the thing about people like Will, though. He, he wins. Yeah. He's a Big Ten finalist. Yeah. So okay. I at least enough. respect it. I mean, if you want me to argue from a, a coaching perspective, uh, I would find it very hard to argue that because Will Lewan has shown to have, I mean, honestly, he's kind of the descriptor, right? Um, he has shown at times to have tremendous skill and ability, yet refuses to use said skill and ability for um, for a majority of the match, right? He chooses at points and times to use it. And so I really think if uh, a coach were able to get him over that mental hurdle, and I'm sure Sean Berman has tried to get him over that mental hurdle, it could be hard to be argued if Will Luan wrestled with a little more aggression that he would not have more success. I really find that hard to argue. We're talking about a guy who pinned Michael Blockus in a headlock. He, yeah, he ripped a headlock, baby. Okay, guys, this that was that was not uh, that was an exception, not a rule. Like that, <laughs> we can go. Bro, we can actually, go read the resume. He was actually really Doesn't active in his final with Levi. Yeah, in my opinion. He did get Levi called for stolen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it went. It was one right to one. It went to overtime, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. but he was active. Modern, I mean, active for Will Luan. Yeah, well, he was active. All right, let's 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 move off. All right. <laughs> anyway, made your point again, Christian. Not my words. Those weren't my words. I actually didn't see that one coming. It was just three wrestlers in a row <laughs> said it, and I found it to be hilarious. <laughs> okay, so NCA, we have the NCA field. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, There's nothing else to you. say. You've said it. You've said it. We've talked about Will okay, Luan. So I said, Nazem. Christian, who is your least favorite type of wrestler to watch? What would you say? Um, least favorite? I mean, yeah. The, if you don't attack, if you're trying to win by as little as possible, yeah, no one wants to watch that. If, you, if okay. you're if you totally risk averse. Or, actually, I hate, in, you know, you don't see it much in college or really even high school. But I hate dirty wrestlers when you know what they're Ooh, doing. Ooh, dirty wrestlers. I don't like the little chip. I don't like the 
Good one. I don't mind uh, tension or aggression or a little bit of heat or a little bit of something, but but yeah. there's chippy little cheap cheap guys out there. I'm like, you're just you're just you're just needlessly uh, prickish, I could say. Yeah, you know, you no, that makes it more fun to watch. Stuff, no, I, but I don't I'm like so it. Mad at him. But I do because I'm just a fan. Yeah, you like WWE probably too, but I <laughs> don't. Are you? I've watched it with you. <laughs> I know that was horrible. That was a horrible experience. I thought that who? was terrible. Which one? No, just because all your guys lost. No, no, I don't even remember who won. Who won? Spay? I don't remember. Spay cleaned up it. Yeah. What was it? SummerSlam. <laughs> it was like Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Oh, you guys are. Are you guys are legit talking about WWE right now? <laughs> yeah. I, that, I got roped. Wrestling. Listen, I we were coming over to watch Royal Rumble, just as a oh joke. You know, God. just hanging with the boys at Ollie's place. Sure, yeah, hanging with boys. Okay, and then got boys it. and Christian. I find out in it, it's a. Fifty dollar bet on. What did you think Royal Rumble pool, man? And you just get a pool. You, well, fifty. Oh, that's kind of fun. And it's. To, I mean, but if it's we're totally watch Royal Rumble, chance. we might as well gamble on you it. You could literally get <laughs> exactly. Drew Carey. That's a fun. Well, if I was going to gamble on it, I would be able to gamble, not just be assigned a random number. I don't think you know what gamble. It's like the lotto. No, get. Okay. It is exactly like the lotto. All right. Yeah, that's not. Anyways. <laughs> Let's let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. I'm trying, I, it's, it's just going to be tough. I you, mean, from you know, to Tyler's to Tyler's defense, I did have a couple Bo Bartlett answers. Also, <laughs> Christian, you said you wanted to talk uninterrupted for a little bit. Well, I don't know if that's. I'm you. sorry. Okay, that's, uh, I will just mute my mic. I will mute my mic. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just it's just I'm, called I'm listening. Honestly, you don't need any technological intervention to just. That's why listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth. Yeah, I don't know, you might have another mouth somewhere, Ben. <laughs> 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 oh, we got jokes this morning. <laughs> Listen. Do the Ace Ventura. Here's the thing on the on the NCAA <laughs> qualifiers thing. On the one hand, they mess some up. P- plain and simple fact. No, no doubt about it. And I'll get, in, I'll get into it. Because there were some guys that were not deserving that got in compared to guys that were just straight up more deserving. And what you have to understand about the qualification process are a couple things. One, it's very numbery. It's all, it's a lot of data. It's, it's not a lot of, it's unfortunately not a lot of this guy beat this guy. It's a lot of, you spit out their numbers based on their record and, and things that maybe we wouldn't as wrestling fans and people who I would say have a, a, a strong knowledge of the sport would necessarily value, but it values the numbers value what it value and it spits out what it spits out. Now here's where it gets weird. Um, in that if you look at in the, the worst example, the worst snub is by far, without question, Dennis Robin of West Virginia. Now, you may say, OK, well, you know, and, and I honestly, I can understand people that say, listen, if you're 33 or 34 or whatever, uh, you know, you can't. Well, I don't. I Why not do it right? It's just kind of like the the 14 versus, the, you know, why did we not see Brody Teske? We knew it was wrong and we just let it be wrong. OK. So on the one hand, I get it. You kind of get what you get. But on the other hand, if you are comparing resumes and you are a thoughtful person, you can't look at Dennis Robbins resume. Somebody was talking to Bracky last night. Huh? No, I wasn't. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't talk to him at all last night. I didn't talk to Kyle Bracky. I, you know, I talked to, check I talked to, phone. I talked <laughs> to, you can, you can check it. We, we spoke on the phone prior to the at largest coming out and he thought I had them. And I, so I got him all hopeful that I, I knew who was in. We didn't speak at all last night. Uh, but you know who I did talk to? An actual expert, someone whose expertise would be very helpful in the room, John Kozak. And he said to me, hey, Dennis Robert, this, this is really bad. He did. And He gets snubbed. And, and so let's look at it. All right, Dennis Robin, look, look at his, con- his conference tournament. He wrestled in the Big 12, 184. Incredibly difficult conference. Tough, tough okay. conference. His losses were to number eight nationally, Bennett Berge, and number two nationally, Dustin Plott. Those were his losses at conference. In his entire NCAA season, he lost to, um, I have it down here, number seven, number eight, number two, number one, number 13, number 21, number 14. I zero off. Okay. Th- those are his losses. He lost to only guys in the top 21. Four of them are in the top 10. Okay. Caleb Hopkins, which you got to, I'll say the name. He, he lost to four non-qualifiers, including Dennis Robbins' backup, uh, Bush, and he lost to Dennis Robin himself. 
This man did not qualify. He was majored by Dennis Robin. He did not qualify out of the SOCON, which I don't have to even elaborate. And SOCON took three at 184. And Dennis Robin loses to number eight, Bennett Berge, and number two, Dustin Plot. His conference tournament's done because he lost his two, and he doesn't get in. And so, and what, what this misses and what the, the numbers miss, and it's something that me and Willie have been talking about since the first time. It was 2015 NCAs, and the, the seeds were all messed up. And Coach Borelli came on and was very helpful, and he informed us that losses do not matter in terms of you could lose to multiple non-qualifiers. You could lose to, so I just listed you, Dennis Robin, he only lost to basically the elite of the elite. And Caleb Hopkins can go and lose to multiple non-qualifiers, multiple unranked guys, and it doesn't matter. And they also threw out the head-to-head, which was also bad. So there's not the right numbers are not being fed into the machine, and they're spitting out the wrong guys sometimes. And then you have a room that has one wrestling coach in it and a bunch of administrators. And you say, okay, why is there one wrestling coach in there? There should be more, right? There should be more. And all these coaches that want to go on Twitter and complain and cry, none of them tried to get on this committee. There was a total lack of interest. And there's normally more coaches on this committee. And Damian Hahn is on the committee, and he's the only coach on there. Why are there not more? Is, did the committee not want more? No, it wasn't that. Lack of interest. So, uh, you know, kind of like the Gandhi thing, you know, be the change, a little corny, but it's hard to sit back and complain and cry on Twitter when what are you doing to get be a part of the solution, part of the problem? And what are you doing to say, we've had this same si- system that says losses don't matter and who you lose to doesn't matter. Well, then that's what you get what you get with that. So it's not a perfect system. There are subtle tweaks. You need more experts in the room, less bureaucrats. Uh, that that just and not to demean, but you need people that know ball. You need people that know what they're looking at because these people don't know. But the all the dynamics, they're not living it. Damien's living it, but you know who else is? And he's one voice in there. So I think that was bad. I do think Bubba Wilson also got snubbed. Um, he should have been in there over over Sima um, head to head. Bubba Wilson had the head to head. His losses were um, you know. He didn't have a loss to a non-qualifier. I really value that. As a ranker, as someone who used to do rankings, a bad loss should hurt you just as much as a good win in a ranking. That's just obvious. No one would, there is no argument against that. They just created the system this way and it's just been accepted. It could be changed. It's not changed. Um, they got They got most of it right. 133 was really tough, but the, when it's bad, it sticks out and those two were bad. And, um, so while there's complaining on Twitter, I understand that. Also, on other time, it's like, man, you could be part of the change. So that's all I wanted to say about that. And I appreciate the, the, uh, the floor on this show. I mean, I, okay, uh, I looked at this, Dustin, uh, Den, Des, Dennis Robbins' record. Dennis Rodman. Yep. I mean, the Dennis guy's an Rodman. NBA champion, um, and no one even <laughs> – I didn't even bring up the fact he, that he was on the Bulls. He does not have a lot of good wins, Christian. No, he does not. Well, and, very, and please locate Caleb shit. Hopkins' great wins. And also he lost. Caleb Hopkins was uh, his first win of the season. Um, besides that, on as far as wrestle stat is concerned, I think his next best win is in the 50s somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, obviously that, that hurt him. Um, Caleb Hopkins actually has a win over a, uh, Ben Pasiuk from West Point, who Nailed is ranked it. number 12 on wrestle stat. Did I say the name right or no? It's actually pronounced Pazook. Mm. Pazook. Ben. I think okay. Ben's right. What a name. I'm going to say Ben's right. I don't ignore the okay. I. I won't because it's I. like Pazooka, a la Bazooka, he wrestles for Army. Okay. So you yeah. remember that? That is a good way to remember And that. Jaquan Anderson, 52, and Tomas Booker, 61, who... Uh, now, those rankings are not very high, but um, unfortunately, they are, in fact, higher than Dennis Well, he lost Rod- to those, and he also lost those guys at conference. He did. Correct. But well, you said when you look at the wins of Dennis Robin, uh, he's got Ethan Duca, number 74, and it's like Halverson, 77. Um, yeah. Dennis, Dennis was hurt in the wind department. Okay, fair. Yes. All right. So here's how I look at yeah. it Dennis was hurt in the wind <laughs> department. Um, uh, Caleb. Ooh, I did find one good one. C- Caleb- Cam Pine. 
48. Caleb should be hurt in the loss department. Okay. So you could say yeah. those are a wash. All right. I'll, mm. even though I wouldn't, you can. Okay. Let's go down to head to head. Sure. He, he majored him. This guy's losing to backups. This guy's losing to non qualifiers, non ranked. It's SoCon gets yeah. three. This is not some, I mean, I'm all for SoCon getting three when there's three. And, but I don't, I don't think that it merits it in this situation. And yeah, I'm so a ride for my, I'm so a ride for my boy Christian too. Miles. I'm a ride for my boy. <laughs> also. Hater Christian Miles. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit before, but Chad Booth in our YouTube chat said idea for seating and better wrestling, a thought for seating and way to prevent ducking the seeds at conference and NCAA tournament should use teams wins and losses at a weight. No, dumb. No. It's crazy. Um, you know what wrestlers can do? And I've advocated this to a few of my own AWA wrestlers. Um, <laughs> Why are you laughing? Is Chad saying dumb things? I, just, I read it and you guys are like, nope, stupid. I'm <laughs> Moving like, on. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> yeah. crazy. You're like, Moving so stupid. On. Next stop. But honestly, guys, what, what, you know, the way we would really sol solve for this, and I think wrestlers can solve for it themselves, is advocate to get themselves more matches. Like this yeah. thing where they're wrestling, say, 20 to 25 total matches prior. I mean, I think uh, Robin was 16 and 9, including conference, mm -hmm. right? Um, is go wrestle more people like that's simple enough to me like go find places where you're gonna wrestle good people and especially like if you're in a battle for a starting spot like say hey coach listen i'm going here you know why because i want to ensure my spot on this team by getting good wins because that's what matters because when someone looks at a resume for an auto qualifier spot or a wild card they're going to look at who did i beat and so you know mm -hmm. what i'm gonna do I'm going to go beat some people. Yeah. And that's, that's it. And so like athletes need to advocate for themselves and they need to understand the process. And if they're sitting out matches or they're not wrestling a lot of them, they got to realize like, this is, this is part of what could happen. Yeah. And there, there's, um, you know, everyone, I think gets a little rash when, when you see this and it's not great and it's not that bad, but it's not great. Um, yeah. but like the idea that it should all come down to conference, um, that's that's the craziest thoughts of, of all because then you're literally saying regular season does not matter at all at that point at all yeah um and well, then you've got for seating it would matter it would matter for yeah. well it wouldn't matter for seating if you're not in the tournament because you're just not seated yeah. um so it would matter for that but yeah i think you have to have the ability to have a great season in a terrible conference and still get in the tournament now punishment yes should you be whatever at you know, you should be hitting the seeds I, severely, but we, you, you do not want the NCAA field to exclude the guys that had a great season in a bad conferences, it, it, bad conference. It would just, it would not be good. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And the people who want regional things, like I understand that that could be potentially, uh, more fair because you know, it's the top eight, but it's really not going to be more fair because there's no way you're going to get right this is a team component so it's not like you're going to put separate the top 32 equally to all the regionals mm -hmm. there's obviously going to be regional that's going to be great at one weight and terrible at another way so that's kind of meh that not, also not completely idea. decimates the importance of the regular season that also yes <clears throat> why because it doesn't matter what you did at all you can go in zero and zero as long as you finish in the top eight you qualify yeah. oh yeah well the, oh yeah or well, or top that's whatever. where the the carter thing is so interesting because it's like, well, you say you want to punish him, but if he's not the number one, right? The number one would wrestle the eight and the 16. The number, we'll say the number four would wrestle the five, the 12, 12, 13. I'm oh, sorry, they'd wrestle the 13 and then the five or 12, right? Whoever wins there. Um, so obviously the, the five and then the 12 or 12 or 13 have done more than the eight and the 16, right? They're better, they're ranked higher. So now are they going to get punished? By wrestling Carter Storaki when he's clearly the number one. But then you have the other thing, it's like, well, if he's not all the way healthy, it could be incredible. You know, maybe he injury, injury defaults out for all we know, and then they get a forfeit, yeah. right? So it's like that is I find that to be so difficult. And I can see the argument going both ways on where uh where you should put him. Carter also now officially has two losses on his record, which you have to count yeah. for these seeding purposes. Well, the matrix counts it and you have to count it. The committee has to count it as well. So he's not clearly the number one. Yeah. 
And I, I agree yeah. that those should those should be losses. And you know, there's the context around it, what it means, but for for seeding and what whatnot, it should matter. Mark Manning had a he took to Twitter and he had like a four t- four tweet string, which basically I don't know if we have it or can not we, yet. I okay, can, um, doesn't really matter. He basically said uh, yeah. Kale and Penn State staff lied about the status of Nick Suriano in twenty what seventeen or eighteen. That was 17. Well, basically, I think his general point is for conferences was I think what they wanted to do was put Carter at the 14 for conferences under the assumption he was forfeiting out. And so they're like, hey, is he going to wrestle? And they're like, we don't know. We're going to evaluate. And so his idea would be that everyone slides up. Carter goes in 14, injury default, injury default, which I don't know, maybe. I don't hate it. I I don't hate that idea. Um, But at the same time, if you look at that, how that would have played out for Bubba, he still loses to Jackson. Like Jackson Turley would slide up, and he lost to him at the tournament because the six would go to the five. That's who he hit because he lost to Rocco Welsh and someone else. So it wouldn't have really – I don't think it would have had a huge impact on Bubba's thing. But I think there is – maybe you can do that, but I don't know. They they have the right to – to carry it how they want to, um, yes, into it. So I don't, I don't think that's a big deal. But Mark Manning, obviously not, not pleased about the. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, and selected. I guess you would say because they earn the ability to to do whatever they want uh, by getting the seed, that they can do whatever they want. But I, the next thing I think it wasn't good, right? It was, it was. They did not tell the truth. They said he was going to wrestle. They put him at the three seed um, when the two, I'm sorry, the two, you know, so then it's like, well, now you get the 15 or whomever making the quarters kind of easy and you kind of mess up the whole bracket. Someone who's significantly more deserving um, probably is not going to get there. Yeah. Messed up pitch that year. Uh, Yeah. Messed up pitch, um, which I think was the point. Oklahoma State was in a team race that year. Yeah, I mean, Oklahoma yeah. State was fire that year. They had eight All-Americans, they had a national champion. They were really good. And that was the year, I mean, then Penn State won five in a row, 40, 49 through 84, which is insane. Uh, Another idea Kozak just sent me is Manning might just want clarity on whether Strach is going to wrestle at NCAAs, because if not, Bubba might wrestle. Oh, that's, really a, interesting. that's a great point. I, I So let's get to Carter right now, because, you know, it was sort of – uh, unclear, I think, to some, based on the tweet he had sent over the weekend. Uh, I, I never legitimately thought there was, it was an option that that Carter wasn't going to wrestle at uh, at NCAs or at yeah at NCAs. But he tweeted, "Big Ten title is cool. NCAA title is cooler. Next chapter, Kansas City." So that's uh, some clarity there. I do think he's gonna. I do think he's. What gonna if he just messed with your emotions? My emotions have not been messed with at all. I've just thought he's going to – I was dubious of him ever wrestling at conferences and up until I saw the, the tweets the day before, and I I never really thought he was done for NCAAs. I just think that just doesn't seem like him at all. Yeah. No, I would be shocked. Shocked. Not, not to see him try. So – Seems like he is pl- th- based on this tweet. He's planning to wrestle and pursue his fourth NCAA title. Where he is seated is going to be a topic of uh, intense discussion when those come out today. The brackets are coming out today. They're still and it's weird because, like, do you feel? I mean, w- with what I said, do you feel like? Do you feel like there is actually a proper place for him, or at this point, there just is no proper place? Well, an idea I would have. Um is how can you insulate the top three seeds, or top two seeds? Put him at eight. What if we put him at the eight? Well, that would not insulate. So that he hits the one seed in the quarter? Damn put it. A, put him at that. the 12. Darn it. Put him at the 12, and then he he uh, he goes through five and four, but he wouldn't hit a oh, top three seed until a semi. Ooh, okay, let's do that. I think you just have to treat him, look at his record with those losses. Where would you slide anybody else? Take the injury out of it. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, and put in wherever the matrix spits them out. That's where you got to go. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. So I think there's a couple of schools of thought. You could, you could say, all right, the matrix is going to spit out what it spits out. And there's yeah. only so much discussion 
for, I think it's called, it's called like your quadrant or whatever. So like you're in this group, okay? And within this group, you can debate that order, but that next tier up, you can't go into it, right? So if he, if it spits out that he can go as high as seven, then you can't talk about him going into six, five, four, three, two, one, right? Even though you can say he's a three-time national, doesn't matter. What are the quadrants? Every six or every no, five? Or no, every it's not. It's not in everything. It's like there's a. I think it's like a point threshold of differential. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Um, I think makes sense. So, for for that now in that seven through whatever or six through whatever, you can debate that however you want. So you could say, all right, within this quadrant, we should just put him as high as possible, right? That would kind of make sense. We kind of know he's probably this guy. He's a three-time yeah. national champ. We should probably have him as high as possible. Or you could get into mm -hmm. sort of bracket manipulation, seed protection for the top three guys. You could do that. I think that would be a little – it could be a little weird. It would be, maybe be more of like my uh, ideal scenario, but it may not be the most fair or equitable or whatever. But it's yeah. going to be a thing. I'll tell you that. Um, so those are coming out today. All right, we talked on. We talked on. You want to talk about Carter's new tweet? We, we just did. Oh, you just did. Are no, you sorry. literally, dude? I have to do a lot over it here. It could be a new one. It could right, be another new one. <laughs> he tweet again. Do we have another chapter? <laughs> are we at chapter three yet? Never mind. Carter tweet checker. Well, oh. isn't Ch Kansas okay. City chapter three? I don't. I don't know. Big. Ah, it's a chapter book. Never mind. I don't read a lot of chapter <laughs> books. My son always makes fun of me. Should we redo the show for Tyler real quick? Just guys, you know, Let's I'm trying over. to send stuff to the producers. Well, I'm trying to monitor the chat. Little Rock I'm, was really upset. Now I'm looking through the best houses now. Little Rock was really upset about Tyler Brennan at uh, 174. Yeah. Uh, give me the case for him. He is tough. I don't have the case. Um, I looked at it this morning and it didn't. Um, yeah, I don't have anything written down. Okay, fair enough. We I don't. thought you knew every wrestler in Division One's match history by memory. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> far from it. My memories, there was a time, well, I would, ne I would never be able to make that claim, but my memory used to be much better. Bubba it? Wilson is the highest ranked guy that didn't make it at 18. Yeah, Bubba was probably a little high. I think Kozak, even because as Ben pointed out, he didn't have the wins, but that's the thing. He started kind of where he was, and he really kind of only lost to good guys. So it was hard to, like, say, no, you're outside the top 33. Yeah. Um, but I think to Ben's point, and I don't know if I even, like, commented on it, but these guys, the, the wrestlers, especially if you know, you know Bubba, maybe you don't know, but you know your guys that are going to be kind of in battles to, to qualify spots. They should be in hit – you can go all these opens in the first semester. Yeah. You can get a bunch of matches. There's there's a lot of things you can do to get. It's like you don't have to go to Vegas. and it, I mean, you should. Yeah. I think that'd be great. But you don't yeah. just have to. You can't just rely on duels, right? Because, one, you can only control. There's so much out of your control. One, is he going to be healthy for this given duel? Two, you don't know who they're going to put out they're there. They're going to put out there. You have no idea. You could be getting their backup, yeah. and it doesn't count at all for you. Um and then you can lose to a backup, and it doesn't even matter sometimes, like at 184. Um, so I, I think, yeah, you got to get more matches. Is That is the, the long short of it. So maybe this does bring about a, a change in scheduling approach for some teams. I think for Penn State, you know, Penn State and Iowa do have pretty limited schedules, I would say. Well, if you got a bunch of number ones, you run, yeah, don't, don't exactly. have to worry about it all and it that doesn't much. Matter for got, them. It doesn't matter for them. Yeah, some – 20 to 40 rank guys then that's kind of going to be a big deal yeah so really it's your team dynamics that should yes. dictate your schedule um yeah and i think you could send you could also to your point you could send four or five guys and say hey why don't you guys go here because you know you guys are on the bubble let's go get you some more wins yeah two plugs coming real quick number one oh. plug tonight eight eastern seven central Bracket reveal show here on Flow Wrestling. You can watch live on Flow Sports app, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, maybe? Even yeah, Twitter? Yeah, even Twitter. We're in negotiations with Twitter right now. Mm -hmm. So you can watch, interact with us. We're going to find out together these brackets. It's going to be a lot of fun. We want to hear your questions. That's one plug. Second plug, uh, Spencer and Austin 
WrestleTown USA film dropped today. It's out. You can watch it. It was on, debuted on the Big Ten Network Monday. Hope you watch it. If you didn't, you can watch it on Flow right now. Here is a little trailer for it. Go ahead, Josh. Ooh, Thank you. Trailer. I would describe Austin DeSanto as someone who you would want to go to war with you. Spencer Lee, he had, he is, he was the total package and still is just the best of the best. Spencer Lee was unbelievably instrumental in recruiting Austin to South Coast. Like, why not have him come train with me? We never settle, pedal to metal. Wrestling for over two years with a torn ACL. It's just a tough situation I was put in. That frustration of that mix and the passion to win, it sometimes implodes on me. College season's long, tough competition. Everyone's trained just to beat you every year. You said that you were coming to Iowa because you know that we'll push you to the places that nobody else will push you to. There's a reason why Iowa City is Wrestletown, USA. That's because that stuff isn't scripted. We here now. Get on my level. 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 And that song, that is actually Tyler Meisinger's rap group mm -hmm. that he does. Whoa. Get on my level. Get on my level. Um, sure I actually think that was my idea. I think I said maybe four years ago to you, Christian, I was like, how interesting would it be to see how these guys are like hanging out playing Pokemon cards at their house or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's been, this has been, all, this has been in the works for a while. I've been pitching this to the various parties internally and externally to try to get this. And then we did it. And, you know, I didn't have anything really to do with the actual making of it. Um, Thank but God. you know what? <laughs> the whole thing was my idea. I had to. I had to oh, yeah, it was your idea. Like it was Ben's idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were the first yeah, person yeah. to think it would be great to see a documentary about I had Santa. to give an impassioned pitch internally <laughs> and externally to get the buy in here. But no, but that mm -hmm. was pretty much it. Is 32 wrestlers too much for the national tournament? By one. I want 32. <laughs> I want 32. Dude, that's so crazy of you to say. You're talking to a 33 seed. Oh, my right gosh. <laughs> Good, kick him out. <laughs> Listen, is there except, yeah. Oh, that'd be even better. Man, I didn't even think about the added benefit of That's you being so a zero-time qualifier. I don't think even thirty-two is just a lot. I think I'd be well, fine with like twenty-four. Uh, can I break this down to you, JD? Because I actually thought about this the other day. Um, so while it may seem like a lot, I know because your point would be that there's uh, only 80, team, 80 Division One teams. There are roughly three hundred thousand high school level wrestlers, and so if you think about it. If 300, just for easy math, 300 make it. So it Sparta. is uh, we, 1% 1, 1 of 300,000 would be 3,000. So we're talking the best 0.1% of wrestlers. Like, I don't know. I kind of feel all right with that. Yeah, that's a really great way. to. I have never thought about that, Ben. Because um, yeah. I've only thought about 33 out of 80. That's like yeah. such a high percentage. But I wonder what it is for like basketball or yeah. it's different cause it's well i know i do know if you look oh. at like the amount of wrestling wrestlers in college compared to high school participation i believe it is the lowest yeah that's crazy yeah. um so yeah i'm 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 actually it's okay 24 then you got kind of it's like uneven ish or whatever yes. i don't know it's not a full a lot of you don't, want, you don't want to go all the way to 16 that's tiny that's really small it's fine. I just don't like the pigtail yeah. round unless Tyler's wrestling. And... I agree. Let's get rid of 33. <laughs> yeah. I would go on that for sure. Yeah. I don't even understand how we got there with that many. It is kind of, it's I... super random. So random. So there, random. There is some reason. Someone explains it to me every, you know, couple of years when I, and I just, it's so inconsequential. I just forget it every time. But yeah. The, they live, they, they talk for like five minutes and then you leave and you're like, what? What is that <laughs> still word? Dumb. What is 32. that word salad? Um, yeah. Okay, all right, Tyler, <laughs> lead us. Into um, the next you guys segment. want to talk about projected team scores according uh, to our rankings? Certainly, yeah, I would love that. I think Josh, I think Wait, you have those. I mean, we should really do it according to the seeds of the tournament, but we don't we have, don't those, have yet. those yet. <laughs> unfortunately, we should really do it based on the results of the NCAA tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Christian! You're being a smart aleck this morning. That was go kinda, tase him, Tyler. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, I don't know where that went. It's back in uh, the Kozak get the Kozak household. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, we don't have the seeds, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to go by our rankings. Oh my gosh, what's the biggest? Is that fifty-eight? 
So oh, 59 and a half. 59 and a half is second. what? <laughs> With Penn so Penn State has project according to our rankings is projected 146 points in first place. In second place you have Iowa with 59.5 points. So Penn State There's according never to, been anything like this. this. This has literally never happened. Never. It's pretty nuts. Like Penn State's not probably I mean, we've talked about how difficult it's going to be to challenge for the team point record that Iowa had, but uh, one thing to wonder is, is this going to be the biggest disparity between first and second place? I don't know what the disparity was when Iowa won it that year. Man, we'll have to go back. I, I don't have that. I bet Jason Bryant would know the answer my, to that. My head, but Kyle Klingman does too. Because they almost triple I, I was projected team score in our rankings. Well, yeah. that's a little exaggerate. Two and a half. We'll, I mean, we'll go two and a half closer. But you know. The race is for second because we have a tie for second at 59 and a half points between Iowa and NC State. And then just half a point behind them at fourth is Iowa State. Unreal. A point and a half behind them is Cornell at fifth with 57 and a half. Point and a half behind them is Lehigh at six. And this is what we said all year long. Like Oklahoma State all was number long. two for a while. They're eight now. And it's like, all right, well, they still get top two or three. And then similarly, Michigan. Michigan had a good tournament, and then they just kind of took the last session off. And it crushed their rankings. They literally. Honestly, you wouldn't bring that up. They lost. I didn't. Wait, they really? They, they did that bad? Okay. Stop. D'Augustino lost his placement match. Ragason lost his placement match. We're going to go through all of them? Limley. Yeah. Gomez. Luan. Cam. They, they all did except for Davison. Everyone but Davison. And Davison Bro, lost to brutal. Felton. I did not realize that. Yeah. They had a great. Wow. I like. It was, I tweeted about how great they did. They had a really strong tournament. And then. Yeah, but but I was actually thinking when I saw Michigan in the rankings right there that what that Michigan's too low. They should surely finish higher than that. I think they. I think and my point I was gonna make is like I think they probably wouldn't surprise me at all. Like Diagostino is in all these crazy matches, but he's they're all so close he can win them. I mean, rag, the rag surprised me the most looking at that. Sorry, I oh, you're good. You. Yeah, you're good. Um, what surprised me the most was seeing Nebraska down at eleven. They're not even in what? Our, yeah, they're not in our top ten right now. Huh. Let's see. Well, how low did Pinto? Pinto? Oh, you got to drop Pinto, Pinto to phone. six. Well, that's that's kind of fair. That kind of feels like where he should be. You know, huh. Smith had a rough one. He got eighth. Hardy. Mm hmm. Yeah. You and guys dropped Hardy down to eight also. And with those guys, so what you need to look at for, for them is like, all right, Pinto six. That's fair. Could he be second or third? Yes. Caleb Smith, where is he now? He's probably really far, but we all know Rob's at twelve now. Rob's at twelve. That kills. So they've got Caleb a lot Smith's of guys. At Thirteen. So Brutal. There's so many. They have all American caliber guys that are outside of the round of twelve or in the round of twelve. But we know that can. It turns on a dime every week. Everything it changes, yeah. so it could completely reverse. You course. know what's crazy? Because of your rankings, uh, if you could put those team rankings back up, if, if, uh, I'll just go to them on my computer. Um, but Iowa's in second place, but Michigan is in seventh, and Nebraska's in 11th, and they both beat Iowa at conferences. Yeah. Wow. That That's is, weird. Yeah, it is weird. Why is that? I would have to it's look, just the uh, individual matchups and rankings, and yeah. it's like, yeah. Because I guess Ayala and Woods are – they're – Second and third, and that's kind of where they finished at conferences. So Drake's still second. Be more he got third at Big Tens. Mm. You guys have Drake at second. What still, about Stanish? Yeah. He's third. Third. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So you guys still have. So you have Braden one. I mean, it, it's very Big Ten heavy. You have Braden one, Ayala two, Ramos four, McKee five, Barnett six. Um, so you guys kind of like kept Big Ten super heavy at one twenty five, and then. You know, it's kind of all other conferences below that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah Dean Peterson is still at 14, which is interesting. Yeah, considering he beat Ramos. But, mm -hmm. yeah. He has not had an amazing year. But he, I think he beat McKee yeah. also this year. You can say that about yeah. pretty much everybody at 125. <laughs> not that he beat McKee, but that, oh, he beat these two guys up here. Yeah. So if you got to put your shekels in a team basket for taking second. Where are you leaning? Jekylls. Mm, I don't know. Um, I th honestly, I, I'm surprised NC State's not a little further. I I think they have a great combination of you feel comfortable they're going to score high in a couple weights, and then 
they've got who's their other guarantee besides uh trent errington's probably guaranteed like top four 149 just doesn't have a ton of strength when's it guaranteed yeah probably not guaranteed. Yeah, he's guaranteed top strong. eight but top four is tough to yeah. do yeah you might be right very few have a lot of high guys. i mean listen camachos for whatever you know, I was so high on him, and then what? I don't know what happened, but now he seems to be back. He's had a really good last month. Can't call him a lock for anything. No, I'm not. I'm, not. I'm saying he was total non-factor, non-starter, and now it's like he could get top six. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't know where he's ranked right now, but I wouldn't really even care. Um, he's nine right now. Nine. So him, Orini has been a rock this year. You oh, know, yeah, you're right. Arini, he's probably their second. Arini's probably going to get the three. You guys have him seed? at six on your rankings. Wow. I think he's going to get a higher seed. Where do, Where's Nasir Bailey going to get seeded is, is interesting to me. He's got one you loss. You guys have him at seven, but he's getting way higher. Yeah. I think he'll be sure. the five. He only has one loss, correct? Vito. Vito. Yeah. So he might get you know, whatever Vito gets. He's probably just going to be one behind him, if I had to guess. I think Vito's going to get the four or five. Really? Oh, he's two losses. Because Vito didn't have. Vito and Dom Serrano. Oh, okay. That could hurt. That could hurt. Yeah. He avenged that, though. Nasir's mm -hmm. good, though. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, but NC State, you know, you don't, I don't feel super strong that Kai is going to be a top four guy or Ryan Jack, but he could. Or, or Jackson Arrington, but he could. Ed Scott, such a good weight, but he seems to be wrestling pretty well right now. Um, Lehigh with Stannis Crookham Beard. Beard. That's an interesting one because, like, is that 55 points right there? But the thing is, where else do, are they getting points? Uh, Nathan Taylor is actually really tough, heavyweight. And heavyweight's he's tough, but he's, uh, I don't know if he's going to All-American. Well, I don't need it. I feel like he's going to be blood. I feel like he's going to be blood round. Yeah, I, he'll certainly be. I think he'll be wrestling in the blood round. Can yeah. he win? Um, you guys have him at six now, but you have him at six. That's above Feldman, Davison, Gadiali. How do you say his name? Yeah. Uh, Heinzelman, Doucet. Uh, you know, those are all really tough guys that you wouldn't be super shocked at uh, beating him. Yeah. Like conversely, like, like Iowa's. Who are you feeling great about um, after Big Tens? I feel like Woods is going to be a high finisher, top four. Um, See, they have a lot of All American type locks. Yes, I think he'll be four. I think Frannick will be All American. I think Caliendo. I think he's probably. I don't want to say guaranteed top eight, but it's going to be like probably a six through eight. Mm -hmm. Frannick, I kind of feel similarly about. Um, Drake, I feel similarly about Kennedy. And, and Kennedy's wrestling Kennedy. really well. Kennedy did not have a good Big Tens because he lost to who else on the backside? I mean, he only lost. He only he lost, lost to, to like Welsh, who's a beast. He lost to Welsh and um, no, someone Griff else. He lost to Welsh right? and Griffith. I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, Welsh and Griffith. Okay. I mean, yeah, I so I could see him being a six through eight, also for sure. Yeah. The uh, I mean, maybe Iowa. We didn't talk about Glazier. Yeah, maybe Iowa. Last yeah. year. Last year when I was at NCAA's, Andy Hamilton, Iowa resident, um, Iowa expert, hmm. looked at me and said, uh, Iowa has not, it was while Real Woods was wrestling in the finals, he said, Iowa has not had, has had a finalist at NCAA's for the, I don't remember how many years it was, but it was like, Tom it was freshman cra it's year. crazy number. Yeah. So could this be the first year that they don't have a finalist? In a absolutely. Long time? It absolutely could be. Yes. It might be the year they're most at risk of that. Yeah. I mean, because well, they didn't year, have a finalist or they had won at Big Tens. Mm hmm. To keep the streak alive, 1960-something was the last time they didn't have a Big Ten finalist in Glacier. Save the day. Yeah. Wow. It's in great. overtime. If I got to put my struggle somewhere on team number two, I think I'm going to Iowa. Yeah, you might should. They just have a lot of – they'd have a lot of bullets. I don't know, man. Yeah. Do you have a lot of bullets? Iowa State look good at conferences, so I would say Carr is a top four for sure. Um younger i Jeez. feel pretty confident saying he's going to be top four there's there's two top fours um i think that who who's their next best one Shit him, Shit him. but 57 he's is so well, tough Swiderski? Eh, Swiderski's going to be in a fight 
to make the podium, but I do think he can definitely do it. Um, Frost is probably Frost. another guy who's going to be in the blood round. He scores a lot of bonus. Mm-hmm. I like how he wrestles. He's tough. Feldkamp yeah. is going to be He's another guy crazy. fighting in the blood round, maybe, potentially. Um, Tarakina could sneak on, you know, into Bad that boy. blood round. He could do it. Yeah. He's tough. Dang. It's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy finish. We could get something. Seriously. It'll be uh, funny if it's just. Oh, so I think we can all agree it probably goes Penn State, Iowa State, Iowa, you and I. I disagree. Not Penn State. To round out the top four. <laughs> uh, that's great. Do you guys think it's a big deal? How big of a deal is it if Iowa State outplaces Iowa at the national tournament? To them. That's Does a big it, deal. To Iowa State? Yeah. And I mean it's huge. Yeah. When's the last time that happened? Do you think that? Do you think it matters more to do that or to win the duel? We've had this discussion. Man, the duel. There's something about the duel. Yeah. If something about it, because it's so. Because it would be one thing if it was like for the title. It's not gonna be for the title. It's gonna be for like a placement point. Yes. Because like, all right, you think about NC State Virginia Tech rivalry, right? You guys probably don't even remember that. You remember NC State won ACCs, and you remember they won the duel. Chris is an expert on this rivalry. Yeah, I am. I'm an expert on this rivalry. Um, but Virginia Tech outplaced them at NCAs. But probably, unless you're, like, super plugged in, you probably don't even realize that because it was, like, a 10 versus a 9 or 9. I feel know? like for recruits, it might matter more. Uh, no. Well, I don't think so. If you're, if you're between Virginia Tech and NC State – you're not like, well, they won the duel, but they won NCAA, so I don't... Their guys peaked better at when it mattered. But they, well, they but also have AC. If, I mean, for them, ACC is also... Yeah. That's yeah. relevant. It, yeah. They won conference six in a row. What if Iowa finishes fourth, doesn't win a trophy, Iowa State finishes second, wins a trophy? How much is a trophy a title? Deal. Well, attached and to Iowa it, already has, and I'm sure Iowa fans are not happy, Iowa finished fourth at Big Tens. Like, for Iowa... That is significantly below standard. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure Iowa fans are grumbling about that. Well, you and yeah, I mean that the standard is the standard at Iowa, and it's it's unchanging. But yes. you can st- you can say, listen, we should have had Tony Cassiope on. Our team. We should have had Nelson Brands on our team. But then the other side of that is they just got Frantic and Caliendo. Like that's the other side of it. And yes, other teams are doing that. Also, I totally get it. But if you're gonna make an argument. And then, hey, they just picked up Real Woods two years ago also. So don't don't neglect that. you got to let Iowa fans also. have this. Well, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, two things can be true at once. Yes, they are getting transfers, but also they thought they were going to have a heavyweight that would be top four, and yeah. inst- instead they didn't. And, you know, that was that was. Yeah, but now what, what if they don't pick up Frantic and Caliendo? Then where are they at? Well, it's worse. <laughs> but this is the new th- – this is uh, – this is, that's their, it's pretty obvious. It's really only the new for four teams, Christian, uh, Michigan, Penn state, Iowa, and Oklahoma state. Mm-hmm. And that's really it. But that, that's going to be, I think the that's the new for, what, for, for picking up transfers. Yeah. Like picking up p- a productive. significant amount. I think there'll be a couple here and there, but like, um, think about Penn state got Nagao, Mitchell, Bernie. That's gigantic points. And Kirkley. Kirkley. Iowa got real. Caliendo, Frantic, that's gigantic points. Oklahoma State got um, Spratly, Jameson. Olesnick, uh Jameson, Spratley, Olesnick, um, and Michigan got well, their whole lineup. Iowa State got Feldkamp. <laughs> oh. Iowa State got Feldkamp yeah. and Chittum. Chittum's Chittum not really a transfer. Feldkamp. Yeah, well, Chittum not really. He's, he's kind of moved. <laughs> he's relocated. Yeah. Transfer adjacent. Yeah. Um, so. No, but for these power programs, they're gonna just, they're gonna be able to do this. And you, you look at the recruits Iowa has coming in; it's very obvious they're gonna be portal heavy this off season as well. And I think Michigan yes. will will look to use the portal again to fill some of their spots. Yes. Um, Speaking of Michigan, there are people in the chat who keep asking me if I know anything about Shane Griffith. <laughs> I don't. I wish I did. I I hope he's doing well. But it, and if you did, you wouldn't tell us, Tyler. If I did, I wouldn't I tell you. you. Wouldn't. He wouldn't. Tyler's Tyler's true blue. Um, he, yeah, it looked it looked bad according to Caleb Piles. I did not see him come off the mat. He's like, cause that night he's like he won't wrestle in the finals. There's no way he couldn't even walk. So I guess it looked bad. Caleb said he, that he was Caleb. Really, he looked really frustrated. Oh yeah, he was. He had to kind of hobble off the mat. 
Yeah, I did not see it. It was uh, very upsetting. If you could read lips, he said some obscenities. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. It, <laughs> we should not stand for that. I was I was like excited because he made the finals and then that happened. I was like, why? I thought he spiked his headgear because I, I heard that they didn't ding a team point because he threw his headgear and I was like thinking yeah. maybe he was excited and then I watched. It straps the, down oh, too. No, he, he popped he's up. not happy. Can't be winning Hodge with that he type of behavior. Happy. He was not happy. Well, Aura lost to Lorenzo Norman. <laughs> it would be additionally <laughs> prohibitive. No, it's definitely more the uh, sportsmanship criteria. Yeah, it's all sportsmanship. <laughs> you know, what do you think about this? If Carter Storacci wins NCAA's hobbled. No, because he technically has losses no. on his record. Okay. So he it's will be, not win it's Hodge. Gonna uh, it's going to be Brooks, I think. I mean, unless for some – if Trent upsets him, obviously not. But besides that, it's Brooks. Honestly, you could say – the 197, or the, yeah, the Hodge will be decided by the winner 197. Because okay, if Trent wins, he is his dominance is on pace. He's insanely he's dominant this year. Yeah. He has been destroying yeah. people. So it could be as simple as that. Whoever wins 197 yeah. wins the Hodge. Trent's at 83 percent bonus this year. Yeah, a lot of pins, a lot of techs. I a really, of, it yeah, it's so actually strong. a lot of text. It's very few pins, actually. Yeah. So many of his takedowns are literally just horsing the underhook until the guy just like goes to his belly. Yeah. I really like Aaron. I don't have a dog in this fight. My only dog is that I really want to see Trent celebrate. <laughs> An NCAA title. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, think about that race to roof. It's think about the point. punches to the face then. Yeah, kind of need it. I mean, no I chair. Kind of need it. No chair is safe. I mean, the other thing is that uh, the Hydleys, uh they seem like great, great guys, and they never got a title yet. They got very close, and I believe it's going to be eight All Americans between the two of them, but no titles. So the Hydley getting a title would be really great. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, we've said it on here before. We think that's a match more than a lot of the uh, rest of the country. <laughs> yeah. For, for sure. I think it's going to be super competitive. I think Trent's listen, Trent, listen, Aaron, everyone knows Aaron Brooks is world-class. Trent Hiley is world-class. This, this is a guy. If he, if something, if you know, alternate universe and he's our guy at the Olympics or he's our guy at the worlds, like if something happens to David and Aaron, all, he's coming back with a medal. I feel pretty, yes. I feel confident. The problem in that is he didn't, what, where should Hidley wrestle? Let's send him to, to Norway. <laughs> Denmark. <laughs> Bro, I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. Uh, oh man, he's got he's got some roots. Where somewhere. do they love sandwiches the most? <laughs> yes, well, somebody's a Luxembourg. Do you think he would, you think go? Do you think he would go 86 kilos? I yeah. mean, but yeah, he's a big boy I guess now. He did, he did wrestle at Bill Farrell 86. Yeah, he can do it. I mean, the problem right in America is you have Brooks, you have Taylor, and you have Zahid. Like, but here, I don't know that you beat any of those guys. Think about this. David potentially done after the Olympics. Aaron, yep. I think, eventually is a 97 kilo guy. And then it's really? Yes, 100%. Wow. Interesting. Um, I feel confident that that will eventually happen. Maybe. Okay. Um, eventually, maybe. <laughs> it'll eventually maybe happen. I, th I think For it sure, will maybe. happen. I think it's certainly being considered. Uh, and then, you know, it's Zahid, who is awesome. And Zahid versus Trent, maybe that should not be dignified with a. A thing. I think it's a thing. What do you mean? It's a thing. Okay. I mean, what do you mean it shouldn't it. be dignified? You think like one would blast through the other? Yeah. I think Zahid has like killed him a couple I think times. Zahid would be the has favorite. He? Yeah. At 86? I think for some trial spots. Um, I think he is this maybe a little history lesson, but I'm pretty sure one of the junior opens, he, he just destroyed him. Yeah. Junior open? Well, how many years ago is that now, though? I'm saying, I said history. That's like four. Okay, but since that time, Zahid's a, a senior world medalist now, too. It's not like... I, I think he's the favorite. I agree. Okay. I think he's the favorite. Dog. But he's yes. really good. I don't think it's like next topic. I would want to see it at the very least. I just need a clause. If NC State, if it's coming down to the wire team race, no team points deducted, please, on the celebration. Yeah. Yeah, you guys should. There should not be team points deducted on a celebration. That is it's dumb. So insane. I agree. What uh, I'm just asking. What other sports have anything close to this? Don't they do penalties in, you, in uh, football? There's personal fouls and it's yards. yards. You don't get to change the score. 
Like people, yeah, people can be ejected, but or, and like, points don't come off like the board. Penalty, like generally, like if you a per, most personal fouls in football are like on the field, harm is done. Your face mask or helmet to helmet. It's not like the match is over and I'm popping top or punching my face. Is or there popping. Not unsportsmanlike conduct in football? If you no, there is, you. there is, but that's like okay, they you, yeah. What is the par- yeah? What do you do if not take a team point away? What do you, how do you punish? I don't know card system, or just like After also the finals, <laughs> eject them. Yeah, I, who cares? It has no impact on the. <laughs> t- you take off your headgear. I think we should be leaning into celebrations. For what, sure. What's wrong with throwing I your agree. headgear? Lean into it, it. it. Don't hit someone with it. Don't yeet it at the ref. But my gosh, if, if you want to toss your headgear, roll it, spike it. There has never been a cooler thing than when Younger Bastida spiked his headgear so hard it went over his head. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I don't even, I don't know how you do that. Anyway. You gotta be as strong as Younger Bastida. Well, I've only, I seen am, it, and I've I only ever seen it one other game. time. When? Uh, the Shattern State Gym, uh, circa 2016. Corey Van Dorn, Nebraska. Real ones, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> with a all... torn ACL. Oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, man, I do remember one time at, at the state tournament in Virginia, this kid lost and he, he got, he got hosed for sure. He got so mad. I mean, I'm sitting way up. I'm like up back. I'm probably literally, they're, they're kind of small. This dude got so mad. He threw his headgear all the way into the crowd. And my guy right next to me caught his headgear. It was the, the first, that's electric it was crazy it almost like boomerang it was like had like a hook about it it was unreal <laughs> had a hook about it yeah it was, it was crazy how he, th- he was he was not happy <laughs> that was not good he must have been a disc golfer <clears throat> i don't think they have a lot of disc golf courses in covington virginia but they might they have a paper factory what? you're crazy you just don't know look up covington virginia colby no colby would not like this place um okay what what are we even talking about? Oh, uh, we have 30 race. minutes left. That was fun. Do you want to talk more about the team race? Do you want to go into questions? Questions, yeah. That'd be great. Um, possibly an unnecessary... This is Chase White on Twitter. Possibly an unnecessary rule change, but how about automatic choice in the second period for the wrestler that scores the first points in the first period? Only a coin flip if the score is 0-0 zero, zero going into the second. Oh, I don't hate it. I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I think, it would, I think it's a... Good way to incentivize because it's totally random how we choose who has choice, anyways. A coin flip, like if you incentivize scoring first, then you can defer or get choice. Maybe see a couple more first period takedowns. I don't know. No, I, I looked it, it up. There's no, co- there's no courses in Covington, but there's you. quite a few surrounding. Just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The 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 fans <laughs> at home are wondering. I don't think that would change <laughs> strategy that much for most guys. Maybe a little though. So we I don't hate it. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the show, but um, Trevor Bunsen on Twitter says the seating matrix for, matrix formula now punishes wrestlers for forfeiting out of tournaments. Many begged for this, but when you have a situation like Carter Storacci, when does punishing him too much on seating actually hurt another wrestler from potentially placing? It's That's a zero sum about. game, so yeah, there's always uh, an effect of that. But you cannot have people hitting a preserve resume button at the mm-hmm. conference tournament and just you just get to carry that into NCAs. There has to be punishment and um you, you can't just say Carter's the number one seed when you don't yeah. do your conference tournament. So um there's there's a casualty with that and we we want our conference tournaments to matter and so I think it's I think it's fine. And if you're not healthy enough to compete at your conference, you are not yeah might not be what you previously have been. Yeah. So we don't know where you're at. Yeah. And you have to be seated based on that. There's very little track record for guys that do the gimmick of not wrestling. I'm not talking about Jason. People bring up Jason Nolf. Jason Nolf won two matches at big tens that year. He had like a pin and an attack. He was, and then he forfeited out and got six. Um, There's very few examples of guys that do not wrestle as second. That do well at NCAs. Killian Cardinal. Remember Dustin is, Schlater did that? He did nothing. And I don't even think he wrestled. Yep. Um, generally, I think he tried to wrestle at NCAs, but it didn't yeah. go well. I think Makai Lewis did it at 
in 2021 at conferences, and I think he did a match, and then he forfeited it out. He was too hurt. Um, he forfeited out from the top side. He, like, won a match, and then I think he forfeited out after that. Um, Killian placed last year, which is one of the, I think, to my knowledge, the first time that's ever happened. Um, so, yeah, we're, we, I don't even know what I was saying other than that. <laughs> can I, can I answer a question that's uh, in, the, in the doc? Mm, yeah. No. I'm just kidding. Yes. Okay, Jamie Belk. Because I, I have an answer for this. Should they start making mats bigger for college programs to avoid athletes to be on the basketball floor and off the mat while the other athlete is still working for a takedown? The Big 12 mat was so preposterously small, I don't even know what they were doing. Like, this is the Big 12 finals. We can't get a bigger damn mat. Like, holy crap. Man. People only yell when that's a Did you see that mat? all-star mat. Yeah. Probably the it same exact dimensions so as the all-star mat that everyone was screaming about. You know, you know, I have, I actually have a solution for this also, Christian Piles. Hit it. It shouldn't be a circle. It should be a square. Really? Well, that way everything's equidistant from the edge, right? Because um, you're wasting so much space by making a circle on a square. We're making a circle inside a square. Mm -hmm. We're wasting an insane amount of dimensions there. I actually did the math on it one time. Use my geometry skills. I think it's somewhere around thirty-six percent of area that we could have more of if we actually. Did it the right way. Or if you just make 36% more space for wrestling. Uh, who hates that? Or you could just make the mat square or a circle instead of square. But that's that's awkward because how do you put circles together, you know? Yeah. You can't put circles together. It's yeah. I, we've tried. Everyone forgets that yeah. Ben was a, a geometry major. Is that true? <laughs> I don't think you can major in no, just geometry. geometry. Yeah, no. He, see, uh, geography. He just, uh, geometry. geometry. But listen, we... It should be squares. Jiu-Jitsu actually uses squares. They're actually, mm -hmm. unfortunately, in this in this instance, they're smarter than us. They're putting <laughs> a square on a square. It doesn't make sense to put a circle on a square. A circle on a square doesn't matter. Freaking make a square. A square on a square. We have a square mat. Make a square boundary. That way we're all equidistant from the edge, and there's no issue. It's so easy. It's just so stupid. Dolomer, I gave you guys the damn idea for the, the z putting mats together without tape many, many years ago. I'm giving you another idea. Make a square on a square. You, so easy. You came up with the idea for the Velcro mats? That was your In idea? 2007, I called Dolomer. I called Dolomer. My idea was not actually. I said, I said, well, here, here's the issue, guys. Dolomer, you guys, I like your mats, but you guys have seven sections. Seven sections, which means I need to tape six six tape lines, right? Yeah. A Resolite has three sections, which means I only need two tape lines. And so in order to be competitive, we need you guys, what you need to do is you need to make a way that I don't need to tape these damn things. Okay. And so my idea was actually a row of magnets um, <laughs> inside the foam. But it's not a bad idea. I need some strong magnets. Put the magnets in there. Boom. They, they snap together right there and you're golden, right? Dang. So yes, in two, the year 2007, I called Dahmer. I said, the problem is you guys have six, six tape lines. Rosalite has two. You guys need to make less tape lines. This is obvious. And then, sure enough, a few years later, uh, Velcro comes out. Yeah, you probably didn't realize that Velcro could be that strong and powerful. It actually sucks. Our Velcro mats suck. I freaking hate them. <laughs> I actually ordered the most recent uh, mats that we ordered from Dalmer with no Velcro. It's really unfortunate. Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I think with mats where you're putting them down once in a while, like for, a, say, a dual meet, like they're your official dual meet mat, I think it's fine. But actually what happens is the, the the space between the mat, you know, where the Velcro is, yeah. because of the way they cut it, it's kind of weaker. And a lot of times the Velcro starts popping up and then it gets hit and then it's it's all, it's not good, unfortunately. All right. <laughs> that was equidistant. And claiming responsibility for this invention and then saying, I actually don't like it. Listen, you can call Dom or you can ask him, did I call him in 2007? I remember the phone call. I don't know okay. if they want to say, hey, that never happened. I remember it. I made it. I was driving through. St. Louis, actually, on Highway 170. I remember making the phone call. You can say whatever you want. Is there is there a way to rectify the fact that Carter takes an at-large bid while the Be Big Ten still benefits off of his allotment? Ooh, that's not good. I agree. Yeah, so the idea there, you could say, if you don't take the mat, because if a guy's not entered, so, for example, 184 Big 12, um, Clayton Whiting Clayton. earned the allocation, but they swapped it and put Hawks in, who did not earn an allocation. So Big Ten's qualifier got kicked back to the field. Whereas Carter enters but goes 0-2, and they Big Ten, Big Ten keeps that one. I think 
it's sort of tough to go back and say, oh, well, he didn't wrestle, so now they take one away. I think that'd be tough, even though I do think I'd be maybe the right thing. Right, to do. Right. I don't, practically, I don't know how you do it exactly. Especially considering... It's kind of another argument against Bubba Wilson, because Bubba Wilson, you actually had an advantage in qualifying. Because I said what, that, yeah. At your conference That's tournament, true. there was X amount of spots, and there was X, X minus one amount of automatic qualifiers. So you should have had an easier time qualifying since one of the automatic qualifiers was actually not participating in the tournament. Yeah. This is why Dennis Rod Robin was the number one host wrestler. <laughs> not Bubba. <laughs> Uh, Without a doubt. Well, that yeah. tweet said, did Tyler Brennan get the biggest hose job? Give me the resume. Yeah. Uh, I would have to look it up. I, don't look I looked it up. He had a few good wins, but uh, he had a few uh, not bad, not good losses also. Um, I will look. I, I'll give you the answer right now. Because we, you know what? Because we love Little Rock and we love Keith we Gothard. Do. And so I'll give you the answer. Um, so he lost to Adam Kemp 3-2. to two. Um, Let's see. He lost to Adam Kemp again. He beat Kyle Valencia, which is not a great win. Um, he, he pinned Benny Baker. That's a solid win. He beat Sergio Des Desante from Chattanooga. Solid win. He beat John Worthing from Clarion. Solid win. Beat Tate Piccolo. Um, yeah, those are probably his best wins. Hmm. Beat Dashiell Lamer, actually. It's a solid win. Every guy on the bubble is going to have probably a very similar resume. Yeah. Correct. So I would just. Well, I mean, never mind. I'm not gonna redo it. Um, how many current, <laughs> how many current high schoolers could win 125? Luke. Well, here's Jack, the argument. Marcus. I was actually. I don't know. If I actually just looked at this. Marcus, al although he did beat Matt Ramos, he also lost to. Braden oh my gosh, Palmer. what's his name? Braden Palmer. Thank you, Braden Palmer. Braden Palmer's number thirty right now. Mm -hmm. So like. You have an argument on both sides. I think there's a possibility. I don't know if I would call it a likelihood. That's why it's could. How many high schoolers could win 125? Yeah. I, I don't know two. if they're stringing that many great wins. Which two? Um, Jackson Luke. Eh, maybe Marcus, why not? Horse, Luke Lillidal, uh Yeah, those three. Are, I I'll say they could. Uh, some of y'all, not likely. Say Marcus Blaze. Sure, I'll say Marcus. Or Anthony Knox. Or... Dang, I forgot about Knox. Mm. Think he's probably gonna wrestle year one for Cornell. Would seem like it. Probably. It doesn't he, seem like a guy that would want to sit, and he's got to be looking at this yes. twenty-five field and be like, he doesn't want to sit. But who knows what might happen when he gets there? Yeah. Um. Well, if he goes to Cornell year one, he is wrestling. So it, it, yeah, we'll he has know. Yeah. Finger legs. If he's. I meant who knows what'll happen when he gets on campus. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's like solid four. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't be shocked, right? There's no, I, I would be stunned would, if all four of those entered, if one of them didn't place. For oh, sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah that's crazy. Okay. Keep um, coming. Besides Penn State, which team with all 10 wrestlers qualified will do the best at NCAAs? Uh, I don't know. Sorry. I, I feel I'm, like that's the same question as the number two yeah. question. Yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't have a it's second like, question pulled up. Cornell, <laughs> Cornell got ten. Um, mm -hmm. how yeah, how many schools got ten qualified? Seven. Was, seven got all yeah. ten. Here I can pull it up. NC Michigan, State, Michigan, Iowa, or not Iowa? Um, I don't think Michigan Missouri. got ten. I don't think they qualified their ninety-seven. Mm, yes, I think you're right. Oklahoma State. Well. Oh, yeah. Flo should have a contest to pick the perfect bracket for 125. And what is the win? I think the winner gets like some stock options or something. No one will ever get, <laughs> no one will get any bracket 100% right. But that's, they do that in basketball. No one, no one does it. It's literally never happened. No one's ever had a perfect bracket. In, in, oh, really? And that's just, six, that's, that's just front side. That's, yeah. Wait, it's really never happened? I'm pretty sure never. There's like, uh, yeah. Like ESPN's. Pool, I, yeah, I don't know if it ever has right, happened. Now I gotta Google this to fact check you guys. Yeah, do it. Warren Buffett has like a thing where he'll pay like millions of dollars to someone if they win. Right, has anyone ever got a perfect NCAA man? Bracket? Speaking of Omaha, Warren Buffett, I watched this documentary. Have you seen this, JD? This happened in your streets. Or your you gotta elaborate a little bit. Street. It's called like Lo Lover, Stalker, Killer, or something like that. 
It is crazy. No, I've never seen. You this. should watch this. It's off. It's really good. I don't anything even know else I, to say. Um. Well, yeah. <laughs> Reason I bring it up. I'm pretty sure they used B-roll from that bar we went to after their wedding. It looked just like it. The Schwackers? Showed, they showed the mechanical, a mechanical bull. Oh it looked God. like the exact aesthetic. But Schwackers has been around for a while, so. You should check it out just for that. I mean, it's like kind of a brief sort of scene, but it's just like where we went after your, your, what, your nuptials. So I, 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 you guys are correct here. There's 60 to 100 million brackets filled out on an annual basis. No one's ever got one right. There was a guy in 19, uh, sorry, 2019 who got 49 picks in a row all the way into the sweet 16, uh, which seems probably would be the hardest part. Um, and the odds of getting all games correct, according to them, are one in 9.2 quintillion. Yeah. Whoa. I didn't realize it was that crazy. And 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 it, one NCA bracket front and back, it, it, I bet it's almost as unlikely. Well, I I think it would be the same amount of bouts, I would, because it, it's the, the field is double in basketball, but they're only on the front side. Uh, yeah. The amount of bouts in the basketball is 63. I, I think wrestling would be very close to the same amount of bounce in the bracket just getting forget the order just getting all eight all americans is so difficult it's, it's so hard to do i did I, I think i've done it one time in my life and it was no you have not yeah i have and it was i was gonna say it was a it was a, <laughs> it was a 133 bracket where you got them in order too um yeah i think i might have but what i'm oh i don't trying know if to say, believe this it was 20. Let's keep interrupting him. 13. What I'm trying to say, a lot. It was a very <laughs> obvious. The pecking order was such that, like, it basically fell into exact line how you thought. It was almost like the seeds. Seeds one through eight. Um, let me look it up because I know it was the year. How do you still have this on hand if it was 20? Yeah, what? <laughs> because yeah, I because it know? sticks out because it was like wow I got. You remember the year? I remember I was in a. It was maybe 12. It I wasn't to... in order. I don't care. Um, no, I think it was. Um, All right, next question. If it, went, if it went one through eight, then the seating committee got it right also. Yeah. Um, someone wants to know just real quick, what was the best match of the weekend in your opinion? I think we know definitely our top three, but what would you guys say was the best one? Dang. Teske. I know for me. Zakis was crazy. For me, Mitchell it was probably Chittam Downey. Mitchell Hamidi. I didn't get that. It was fun. Well, I mean, it was a lot of like. Well, to me, because it's Iowa, so I have the personal interest and in, in bias. Like six points. I mean, it was a quintillion overtime match. It was like not a lot of scoring. It was but a the tiebreakers are so intense. So much That's what makes in it. the same position. I don't know. Controversy. Oh, so you love tiebreakers when when it's Iowa guys, but Willowan goes into tiebreakers. Hey, I put respect on Will's. <laughs> I put respect on Will's name. You did put respect um, on Will's name. Thank you. Hey, Christian, Jason Bryant, our resident quant division, said the seeds have ne one through eight seeds have never finished one through eight. No, I don't think so either. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what you just yeah. said like five minutes ago? Well, it was close. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was a pretty obvious one. I don't remember uh, which year it was. Someone on Twitter asked if JD could wear the exact same outfit today as uh, Monday. Sorry, I had to, had to rep the Lopers today. If you need to get your wrestling fixed, D2 Nationals. Yeah, apparently a lot of people... Lopers are, are going to whip some tail in with I heard you were getting a ton of hate for your fit on Dude, you pe the whole YouTube chat, like the entire show only wanted to talk about your outfit. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Jay <Daniel>. Provocative. <laughs> I get the people going. There you go. Oh someone said, can someone please oh. ask Shane Sparks <laughs> to stop adding an S to every state school? Penn State's, Ohio State's, etc. <laughs> Chael removed an S from Christian's name, and Shane added one to state. Oh, I don't know what that means. Well, I mean, there um, are times where you say Penn State's Braden Davis, so I don't know what it means. I there are know. times I, you, you I, should. It's not Penn State Braden Davis, so I don't even know. That person's um, not even right. <laughs> hey, one of the guys, Burger King of Kings, is talking about younger Bastida, and he said he wanted to make the American wrestling team. Man. We got all these guys transferring to wrestler other countries, Puerto Rico and Mexico, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Younger is literally Cuban and came from Cuba. Cuba should just let him wrestle for the team because they got no one as good as him. Mm. What do you think? L wrestle for what team? Our team? Cuba. 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 Yeah, they're not going to be super receptive to. <laughs> I don't know, I know, I don't know how much should. of a history buff you are, Ben, but they're not as cool with Younger being here as you might suspect. So. <laughs> 
They're not super uh, into think the Think about American their socialist dream. community is so good that people have to try to escape it. Yeah. That's how great it is. It's so, yeah. Wait, what? Did well, we, socialism's great, Christian. Plow, it's good. Oh, no, it's good. I'm looking at this question. I can't remember. Did we talk about the Arrington Henson position last show? A little bit. Yeah, yes. we did. Okay, we did. sorry. Never mind. It's okay. I do think, so I think, because um, Keegan had the same situation with Carr, but not quite as... I, I would not have considered that takedown what Keegan did, but there was a thing for like a while. I feel like if you ever stepped over that back leg, even if they had their hands locked, it was uh it was a takedown, which I, I didn't ever really agree with. Um, but I feel like for a lot of people, that's a situation that maybe they need some more clarity on where they're not really sure what's going to happen with the referee. And they feel like as soon as the, if it's a head outside shot, as soon as the defensive wrestler steps over the leg, that it should in fact be two. Yeah. Well, the the thing for me that I didn't even realize last show, I went back and watched, and I didn't realize that Henson was in the exact same position before Arrington was. Yeah, it's a weird position. I don't know. So Brock Height posted like a uh, a high school rule book picture, which is literally the exact scenario. But I don't know if that picture is in the NCAA case book. I don't think it is actually. Um, cause if it was, he would have produced it. Um, so I don't know how I feel about it. Sometimes I see it. I'm like, that should be. And then sometimes you see it. You're like, it doesn't, and I don't know what the difference is. Maybe Ben could speak to like, to the nuance there, but I don't know why yeah. sometimes it feels right. right. And sometimes it doesn't. Well, so the, the deal is if, um, if, if you're more out to the side, which I believe was the case in both the Keegan situation and the, uh, the one we're talking about, that was the takedown is that. It's relatively easy. I don't want to say relatively easy because not everyone has the skill set. But if you turn, you can turn in and pop your head up still. And actually, if the person's leg is hooked, sometimes it drops them back to their butt and they kind of give up the takedown out of it, right? Because mm -hmm. they force themselves over the leg earlier than they should have. So I feel like it's one of those if the if the bodies, right? If the bodies are facing a more parallel direction, they're both facing forward, then that is kind of when it's I don't know, like a, a settled position where the offensive per, or the defensive person has the takedown and the off person offensive person loses but if the if the uh defender if this person sprawling steps over like too early and they're still like in a perpendicular position to the other body they're actually at a significant amount of risk if the bottom person knows what they're doing and i don't think that should be a takedown mm -hmm. yeah i think that isn't that kind of what happened with keegan and Carr? yeah i don't it yeah, was not Carr a takedown stepped over and, and, and then I, and keegan kind of fine. rolled rolled over so Keegan Carr was able to pop his head up. Yes. Um, this one is a late entry. I don't know why I read that first part. Um, how many Hodge votes are available? How many get cast with Penn State having nine? Could they hypothetically get together and make anyone they want the winner? Oh, God. um. Well, you got doesn't the previous Hodge voter only count for so many? Um, you're you. Right, it's you not know? just all previous Hodge winners. Well, yeah, and you have two votes. So yeah. Kale has three votes. Uh, David has so they, two. They, yes, they're getting, they're getting up there in number to the point where maybe the committee should start considering that. Yeah, well, I think you should just let the people vote, honestly. People? Yeah. Fans? No, no, the, the people as in the voters vote. Just like whatever the vote is, is the vote. Um, are you saying that the that well, listen the last winner, the or? last time they intervened they 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 blew, hodge. <laughs> they blew it they did a double hodge when someone won and someone didn't like so i don't know i don't want them to change that i don't want them to change the votes um so wait so you do want former hodge winners to vote or not yeah so you're saying you should just let them vote yeah. what if penn state like wins the next like 10 hodges and they have Let's let that happen first. Let's let's have a guy, let's have a guy win the Hodge that's not deserving before we try to change the system. Yeah, that, that's the that's only fair. time they yeah. they we got the wrong, you know, whatever wrong. The voters that's when they decided, oh, we'll just decide after all the votes were cast. You're Spencer Gable, yeah, is that what we're talking they about? just decided. I think they just yeah. decided. I that think Ben crap. split his vote, and it, it that's true too. Stop <laughs> ben did blow it. They but, they did not count two through four they said only first place votes because they they win magazine 
wanted a specific outcome. Yes. Um, and I listen, I I'm not I haven't seen the second to fourth place votes. But what I would guess is that the second to fourth place votes would have given them an outcome which they didn't want, and it would therefore that's why they chose to not count them that year. And then because people threw a fit, they had to say, Well, we're never counting them again. <laughs> yes. Um so yeah, let's let's get to don't have a hypothetical basket. Let's have it happen. Let's have it. Well, Aaron Brooks is good. If he wins the Hodge, he's probably going to be an incredibly deserving winner. Um, so. For sure. Um, hey, when's, uh, who's getting the Central Michigan job? People talking about Casey Cunningham, oh, yeah. but I can't really imagine him leaving Give Penn me, State. That is insane to me. This, this guy. I said I can't imagine it. No. Who's saying Casey Cunningham? People in the chat. That would, that would shock me. As much as uh, anything, that no, I mean he's I would agree. He, he has seemingly shown very little interest in not. To, I'm not making this about CMU, but much better jobs on paper. So I know it's his alma mater, but he is no. There's I, a little something about your alma mater that's special. Yeah. Have we have we shouted out Coach Borelli and thanked him for a, many decades of coaching? I'll let you be the first. Do that. Shout out Coach Borelli. Thank you for many decades of coaching. Yes. You actively he's competed not against him. See, here's the thing. Everyone's like, Where are you, when are you going to say something about Central, about Borelli? Well, he's not done yet. You know, the time That's will true. come. We're going to talk to him at NCAAs. He's going to be coaching there. Um, it's just been announced. So it is. So it who is, do you think is getting the job, Christian? Uh, I feel like John Reeder makes a lot Ooh. of sense. The gladiator. Mm. I've heard that rumor also. Michigan man. As in, he's yeah. from Michigan. <laughs> The other kind, there's two kinds of Michigan. Don't man. you dare say he's a Michigan man, Tyler Listen, says. I would take I would take offense if I was born and raised in Michigan and I couldn't say I'm a Michigan man. I'm a Michigan man and yeah. Kozak is not. And that's just that's, that's just, just no. <laughs> like if 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 people were as obnoxious about saying like like Virginia, like UVA, and you're a Virginia man, and I couldn't be a Virginia man, you're not. I would be look. So upset. John Reed is a smart man. He had no interest in being a Michigan man. He met. He left for a much better state. Oh yeah. my gosh! <laughs> Where he won a national oh, freaking no. title. With Here a, we go. With a bloody face. Um, a broken neck. Can Penn State no. all American? Yeah, I'm joking. Uh, can Penn State AA all ten? Who was the last time? What, who was the last team to do that? Minnesota. I mean, Carter. Their oh, lowest man. seed might be Carter Starachi. Yes, they can. Everyone can. Who play. was the, who was the last team to do that? Was Minnesota, it Minnesota? 2000. Minnesota Minnesota the only team to do it. They're the only team that's done it. That, there's only been one team to ever do it. Yes, I believe. Zero so. champs. No champs. No finalists. They won nationals with that, though, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. The champions. That would. Uh, how big of a deal would that be? Like, I think, it's, I think it's a big deal. I think it's a huge deal. It's really hard to go ten for ten. Um, even with all their great teams, they haven't done it. They haven't so. done it. What's more impressive? Five champs or ten AAs? Five champs. Yeah. <laughs> but five, five champs has been – but uh, hold on. Hold on. Something Statistically being, speaking, something being has rarer, five champs been done before? Statistically speaking, rarer. five champs has been done way more times than ten All-Americans has. Yeah, so something rarer does not ma make it less or more impressive. Why not? Not in my opinion. Why not? Wouldn't that be like by definition, the more rare something is to happen, the because more t ten eighths, difficult it is. Ten eighths is not as impressive as five firsts. This, this is, I mean, this this is your opinion when the facts actually say something different. No, no. The, the rarity. How many times has five champions the, happened? The like, rarity oh, is inconsequential. I don't want to say a lot. Probably. Is, but you're but you're wrong. No. How many times has five I'm, champs yeah, happened? You are we, wrong. We, we, we should get opinion. that data before. No. I feel like it's a, I, I, to me, it's like the, uh, yeah, I think it's just, you know, I don't think that Kyle Dake's four titles at four weights is more impressive than, uh, Kale Sanderson's four at two weights or, I agree. Was, okay. You well, it's never really been done, Ben. It's never been done. You yeah, think but it, that, I mean, oh, uh, well, that's, oh, that's well, no, 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 hold on. How much that's humans grow? That's, stupid, that's different because how many people actually grow that much? That's kind of irrelevant, right? I mean, the four titles versus three titles versus two titles. Like, yes, obviously, four has been done less than three, has been done less than two, has been done less than one, obviously, right? Um, which makes four more impressive. And all teams have the goal of having as successful as the team possible. 
and five champions has been done. I want to say a significant amount. I bet someone will give us a correct answer. Um, and no one, one team has ever done one. Okay. And there's way more four time all Americans than individual national champions, but winning a national title is, is more impressive period. Um, yeah, so I mean, I you don't can't know. dispute no. that Ben. You can't, you know, I mean, it's something that people would choose. What do you mean? It's, it is absolutely disputable. Well, I think it's, disputable. I mean, would I prefer now you said Ben four time AA or national title, which one would you prefer? Yeah, I would, I would, um, uh, uh, probably take the national title, but when you say it's indisputable, I think you're wrong on that because, um, you know, a four time all American means you're good enough to be in the top eight every single year. Now, again, I would choose the national title, but, um, you know, in, uh, and so therefore it's hard because you have to be healthy all four years. You have to be in the top eight all four years. And so one injury or one illness or one bad tournament is going to take you out of that. Whereas you only have to be healthy one year to win a national title. Ben, is your wife's name, Amy? <clears throat> yeah. Why? Well, what's up? She's in the Facebook chat. She said, Ben loves disputing. <laughs> yeah. He's a big disputer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of with Ben on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I need, let's go. I need to know. I need to know how many times five champs has been done. Probably if like it, six, five. I can or six. at least think of three. I can at least think of three. Oklahoma State did it. Penn State's done it. Give me ten A's. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. We got some common sense on FR. That's data, baby. I, I, I think that okay, data. I said it is disputable. I think that I think that most people like 99.99% of people would rather have a national title than four AAs. But I think that the argument of 10 All-Americans versus five champions, that is for sure disputable to me. Like what's more reflect, like what reflects more on the coaching staff or whatever it is. Like It can be disputed. Yeah. My mind will never be changed. Just like the four-time <laughs> All-American versus national champion thing. Things can be rarer and that doesn't make them better, superior. Fair. Well, I don't think, was the question better or more difficult? I don't know. Because I think there's also a difference there. It's harder to yeah. win NCAs than to place. Yes. Okay. By definition, we have statistical evidence of this. Yeah. I don't because know. there are eight placers versus one place. Yeah. There's one one spot. Hmm. Yeah, but eight. if it's uh if we've had 70 national tournaments and we know that and I actually I actually is is that fa are you factually correct on that there's there's less uh four-time Americans than, than one-time champions. I don't know that you're factually correct, but if you are factually correct on that one. Um then I already know I am. We have seventy years of evidence to prove you're wrong. No, <laughs> you're just not a good math person. This is the problem here. Ben you just majored don't in geometry. Math. Dude, oh yeah, you are a geometry major. So maybe I should be quiet. Christian, I know you failed algebra class. I That's actually true. Is that actually true? <laughs> oh, bro, I knew it. Oh, listen, oh, you failed. Y'all don't know about this. Well, well, hold on. Listen, I'm. You want a little transparency? Yeah. I, listen, first of all, my. Uh, Pathetic uh, history in academics is is known. I'm very open. That I was a very bad student. Is known. I talk about it all the time. Horrible student. Worse, even worse at math. At one point in time, my junior year, I had a point nine GPA. This is this is. I'm just telling you that happened. Point uh, nine. Point nine. We're that's hard, that's kind of hard to do. Teacher at one point. <laughs> yes, I was. Oh my. Okay. God. It all worked out in the end. <laughs> Listen. I had to pay a price for my, my poor uh, studiousness. I was a bad student, oh and gosh. I embarrassed. My, my father was so disappointed in me because um, of my brothers, I was the worst one. And then my nerd youngest brother was, like, second in the class in a 4.3 GPA. Um, so, but I did fail Algebra 2 trigonometry. It happened. I said, I'm just. Uh, algebra 2. Algebra 2. Algebra, algebra 2 trig is harder than Algebra 1. Yeah, I failed it. I did not pass it until college. I had to take like the, a remedial math class in community <laughs> college in order to start I, taking I this. In, our, in order to start taking real math classes. And I'm, you I'm, went on to be a teacher. And I went, well, yes, I was a teacher for, for three years before I, I worked here. Can we be sure your children are homeschooled? Can we be sure that they're getting quality education? Well, I'm not involved, so that okay. helps. Thank Kate, God. Katie Piles, uh, salutatorian of uh, Green okay. Greencastle High School, very What's smart person. It's like second, second in place. her class. She's yeah. she's really smart. Uh, my children are, are sharp as tacks. Okay, it's ten oh one. It's ten oh one. <laughs> one point oh one. I, I think GPA. Caleb Piles at NCA's. I'm gonna put Caleb Piles versus Christian Piles. 
in a math contest. I, see I think wins. Caleb would crush Christian. Yeah. Caleb is actually a very smart kid. Yeah. Why do you say actually? <laughs> because, <laughs> I mean, look at what, look at what he's dealing with don't over say, here. You don't have to say actually. All right. Let's right. get out of here. Right. Katie's let's get out of here, brainiacs, <laughs> algebra lovers. I'm going to do some math, too. And, uh, hey, <laughs> this is the best day of the year. This is such a fun... It's not really the best day of the year, but it kind of is. For a wrestling fan, it's the most nerdy, fun, debated day of the year when we talk about brackets. And they're coming out today, tonight, 7 Central. Me, Tyler, Kozak are going to be back in here. It's a bad day to be a Christian Piles hater if you watch our shows because I'm going to be on like five hours. Of <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait for it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. See you tonight, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. Goodbye. Go Lopers.